in the heart of the most desolate desert, where the sands whisper tales of forgotten times, the cursed pyramid of the Pharaonkahara lay hidden beneath centuries of sand. A testament to the hubris of man and the wrath of the gods, this ancient edifice stands against the relentless march of time and the countless skies, guarding the tomb of a ruler damned to eternal unrest. It is said that the pharaoh Ankahara, consumed by greed and a thirst for power, invoked the fury of the gods when he sought forbidden knowledge to extend his rule beyond the grave. Infuriated, the gods condemned him to a wretched existence as a lord of the undead, forever entombed within the dark chambers of his own creation, of his own greed. His once glorious kingdom crumbled to dust, leaving behind a desolate wasteland, cursed by his unholy presence. Despite the ominous legends, rumors of the pharaoh's vast riches have lured many an adventurer to their doom, their bones now scattered among the shifting sands. Yet this group of intrepid heroes, drawn by a sense of destiny and the promise of untold treasures, have dared to embark on the most perilous of journeys deep into the darkest heart of this forsaken desert. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting blood-red hues upon the vast sea of sand, your brave band of heroes approached the ominous silhouette of the ancient pyramid, forever shrouded in a perpetual desert storm. The restless wind howls upon your senses as if the desert itself seeks to warn you of the horrors that lie within this crypt, the tomb of Ankahara the Rapacious. Undaunted, you steal your resolve and crack the sandstone tomb entrance, releasing ancient air that assaults your senses. You descend into the darkness, each step echoing through the labyrinthine corridors of this eerie, hallowed crypt, knowing that your presence has stirred ancient spirits from their slumber. As the last of the torchlight flickers against the hieroglyph-covered walls, a heavy silence blankets this tomb, the weight of centuries and previously doomed expeditions bearing down upon you. Meanwhile, in the depths of this forsaken monument, the restless spirit of the cursed pharaoh stirs, sensing the sweet aroma brought by the intrusion of mortal souls into his eternal domain. Ankahara's eyes blaze with unholy delight. The Lord's tattered, bandaged form rises from his ancient sarcophagus, ready to unleash his wrath upon those who dare disturb his immortally cursed slumber. Little do the heroes know the magnitude of the evil they have awakened, nor the trials they have yet to endure. Driven by their courage and determination, forged in the fires of countless battles along with their own personal avarice, they will put their very souls at risk in this zero-sum test as they now confront the ancient, cursed Pharaoh Ankahara the Rapacious and seek to restore balance to a world long lost to darkness. Right now on Riches and Liches. Welcome adventurers, I'm Rich and this is Riches and Liches, where it's all things Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop role playing. And in this episode of the D&D Lore Show, we've got a good one. Another subscriber chosen subject for our very expedition, with just under 50% of the total vote, we're going to brave the desert heat and violent sandstorms to penetrate where only the dead dare dwell. As we go inside the pyramid tomb of an ancient pharaoh cursed by his own gods and risen as a vile and nefarious mummy lord. We have a lot to cover today, so this might be a long one. Not only will you get all of the lore and the homebrew lair and lair actions that you've come to expect, but today, today especially, I implore you to stick around until the very end, and if you do, you will gain a preview of, and another hint if you will, of a fully homebrewed mummy lord champion. One that you'll be hearing a lot more about in the very near future. To those that are following my cryptic community and Twitter posts, hinting at a massive project that I'm working on, this is yet another piece of that puzzle that I'll be revealing soon. Now, most of you know that we launched the Riches and Liches Patreon just over a week ago. 
And it, like everything else associated with this channel, has to grow from the most humble of beginnings. I mean, it starts at zero. And as part of the Patreon reward system, as most channels do, I like to offer an in-show thank you uh, given every episode to those Patreons. And we're going to start that with this one because we actually have two. That's right, just two, but that's okay. Awesome individuals. So I want to thank Matt Agron and XX Red Rum. Thank you. Your willingness to jump in and support me in this early stage while I'm still finding my footing will not be forgotten, but I'm not going anywhere. For me, it's about being humble and staying humble and never forget those that made this channel and the community with me, all of you. So again, a sincere thank you. For enduring that cringy virtual group hug, I now hope to reward you with a top-notch lore video. And if you like them long, I think we might set a record here because we're gonna go pretty deep. And while I'm at it, I have a confession to make. I was a little worried that my own bias and love for the undead creature types in the Dungeons and Dragons universe might limit audience appeal. So I've tried to mix it up with some fake creatures and dragons and giants, all of which are very cool in their own right. Do not get me wrong. And they'll continue to be covered. But as the polls have made very clear, many of you share my love for the undead and their ability to tell a tale, a dark tale filled with forbidden magic and ancient secrets. So let's get started. Let's get out of this desert heat and descend into the tomb of Ankahara the Rapacious. Today we unravel, pun intended, the mysteries of the dreaded Mummy Lord, an ancient evil of immense power. And whether you're a player or a dungeon master, the Mummy Lord is a flexible tableau for many scenarios and epic encounters at your table. The Mummy Lord is a being of ancient origin, created through powerful necromantic rituals or curses from a higher power and are often encountered in desolate tombs or long forgotten temples. As we explore the terrifying lore of this dark dreaded creature, we shall also learn how to confront it and potentially emerge victorious in your next Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Let's look at some of the common questions you might want to ask as a player or dungeon master as you plan an encounter with the Mummy Lord. How does a Mummy Lord come to exist? A mummy lord is often the creation, a cursed manifestation of a dark god or deity, or the byproduct of a failed attempt at immortality. The remnants of a powerful priest or even pharaohs, kings, or queens, they are bound to serve in the unlife for all eternity, often as a punishment for angering, betraying, denying, or otherwise forsaking those gods and deities. As these cursed yet powerful undead, they generally are bound to a tomb, temple, burial site, or other sacred location by the god that created them, forever guarding that which cursed them in life. Who does the Mummy Lord serve? Mummy Lords are bound to the gods or entities that curse them, serving their will and guarding their tombs and sacred areas from trespassers. In some cases, a Mummy Lord may have broken free from their original servitude and now seek to enact their own nefarious plans. That is often a popular and exciting homebrew path to add more agency and plot flexibility in a campaign or adventure, something we'll talk about a little later. What is the Mummy Lord's personality and intelligence? Mummy Lords are intelligent and cunning. They're not genius level, but they do possess a normal sentient intelligence. Plus, they have memories that span centuries. Their personalities often reflect their past lives, filled with the same arrogance, ambition, or a deep-seated hatred for the living that they may have had in life, and perhaps even hatred for the God that cursed them. What are the Mummy Lord's motivations and goals? The Mummy Lord's primary goal is that which it was cursed with. This can really open the door to some creative freedom. But in general, their driving goal is to protect its tomb and the treasures within, striking down any who dare to invade its domain. The Lord may also seek revenge upon those who have wronged it or work to complete ancient tasks left unfinished in life. Much of this will be dictated by the Mummy Lord's backstory that outlines the origins of their immortal curse's existence. For instance, did they anger a god and become cursed, or did they try to achieve immortality through perhaps the process of lichdom and failed? What does the Mummy Lord look like? Okay. Who doesn't know what a classic mummy looks like? 
From 50s monster movies to Scooby-Doo cartoons, the mummy might be one of, if not the, most iconic looking monsters of all time, appearing as a skeletal corpse wrapped in tattered, age-worn bandages. So does your mummy lord have to be the moaning skeleton wrapped in linen trope? Well, if you've been watching this video, hopefully you already know that the answer is not just no, but hell no. The tired trope may work for your standard level three garden variety mummies, but this is a lord. It held status in life, and despite being cursed in the afterlife, it should still be representative of a level 15 plus CR type boss monster. Its visuals can range from skeletal and desiccated to gaunt, or perhaps even on par with the living, dare I say, attractive or beautiful. Its eyes burn with an unnatural light, and they can be of any color you wish. And its body is almost certainly going to be adorned with valuable jewelry and ancient artifacts that are, in many respects, a remnant of their former life and their former status. As former pharaohs, high priests, and other high-status beings in life, they maintain that air of majesty and regality, even in their terrifying form. As a DM, you should pay special attention to and provide your players with the proper detail on the Mummy Lord's accoutrement. This is a good indication to the players of the origin of the creature. Were they a pharaoh? Then adorn them in the opulence befitting a king. If they were a mere priest, then visual clues should be evident there as well. What does a Mummy Lord lair look like? A mummy lord's lair is typically found deep within a pyramid or an ancient crypt. That, that's kind of the trope. But you should feel free to expand the possible locations of what a mummy lord's crypt or tomb might look like to keep things interesting, keep your players guessing. I'll be providing some less common locations for a mummy lord to protect in our homebrew section, so be sure to stick around for that. But regardless of what the location is, these lairs should be filled with traps, guardians, puzzles, and cursed relics that challenge any would-be tomb robbers long before they reach the actual resting place for the target of a group of brave heroes. Before we talk Mummy Lord combat, let's take a look at the official 5th edition stats found in your 5e monster manual on page 229. The Mummy Lord boasts an armor class of 17, but hit points of only 97 and a movement speed of only 20 feet per round. They are the shambling mummy that we've all grown to know. And they have a challenge rating of 15. Just like their lower regular mummy kin, those wraps they wear are better than lighter fluid, as the Mummy Lord is vulnerable to fire, making even the very torches you carry a viable weapon against them. They're immune to necrotic and poison and cannot be exhausted, charmed, or frightened, so tell your bards to put away that song, it's not going to work. They have dark vision of 60 feet and gain advantage on any saving throw against spells or magical effects. An important distinction here is Mummy Lords are only 10th level casters due primarily to an intelligence of 11. Again, they're not stupid, but they're not genius level either. But they do use the Wisdom ability, which is 18, so that's plus 4, and is also a reason why they should be played from a combat tactics perspective very strongly. They possess 16 spell slots ranging from 1st to 6th level, and these spells should be swapped out as needed to better fit whatever scenario that you're running. Outside of their normal attacks and spells, the Mummy Lord also has two special attacks, Rotting Fist and Dreadful Glare. Rotting Fist is a melee attack. It's a plus 9 to hit and causes 3d6 plus 4 bludgeoning damage plus 6d6 necrotic damage. Upon landing this decayed punch to a living creature, a DC 16 constitution save must be made or the target is cursed and unable to regain any hit points. That means no potions, no friendly clerics. Additionally, the target's max HP is reduced by 10 for every 24 hours that pass while this curse from this rotting fist is in effect. If a remove curse or other powerful magic is not used to remove that curse before the target reaches zero hit points at the 10 per day, they turn to dust. And I shouldn't need to tell you that a pile of dust requires far more than a revivify to bring back to the mortal realm. Mummy Lords also have the Dreadful Glare ability within a 60 foot range that forces a DC 16 wisdom save on one target the Mummy Lord can see, causing the target to be frightened, and if the save fails by five or more, the target is also paralyzed. 
Mummy Lords also have five legendary abilities. The first is to take that dreadful glare or rotting fist attack, which in and of itself is pretty powerful. But the next four are all designed to allow the mummy to maintain some distance, use that combat awareness in a combat scenario where the Lord may be at an action economy deficit. First, you have Blinding Dust, where Blinding Dust and Sand swirls magically around the Mummy Lord. Each creature within five feet of the mummy must succeed on a DC 16 constitution save or be blinded until the end of the creature's next turn. Blasphemous Word, which costs two actions or points. The Mummy Lord utters a blasphemous word. Each non-undead creature within 10 feet of the Mummy Lord that can hear the magical utterance must succeed on a DC 16 constitution save or they will be stunned until the end of the Mummy Lord's next turn. They have channel negative energy, which also costs two actions. The Mummy Lord magically unleashes negative energy. Creatures within 60 feet of the Mummy Lord, including ones behind barriers and around corners, can't regain hit points until the end of the Mummy Lord's next turn. And finally, Whirlwind of Sand, which also costs two actions. The Mummy Lord magically transforms into a Whirlwind of Sand, moves up to 60 feet and reverts to its normal form. While in Whirlwind form, the Mummy Lord is immune to all damage and cannot be grappled, petrified, knocked down, restrained or stunned. Equipment worn or carried by the Mummy remain in its possession. Now that we know all about the Mummy Lord's stats, we can better ask and answer the question of what are the Mummy Lord's primary combat tactics? In addition to the inherent spells and abilities of a Mummy Lord, they also heavily rely on the legendary actions and their lair in a combat scenario. Far more often than not, a Mummy, especially a Lord, is going to be encountered in his lair, not as part of a random wilderness encounter. So he shouldn't be on your, on your random travel tables. As such, having strong lair actions to challenge those that have, in most cases, chosen to confront the Mummy Lord, they're seeking out the Mummy Lord, is critical to make a memorable and also plausible encounter. This includes riddles or puzzles to even gain entrance into the tomb, ever-present traps to hinder progress, and minions and guardians along the way, all designed to weaken the party before any final encounter with the Mummy Lord. Once the party reaches the Lord in the heart of his lair, a Mummy Lord's gonna rely on his lair and legendary actions to keep the invaders at bay. Yeah, they're not genius level intelligent, but they're certainly smart enough to know that they're not melee tanks, as evidenced by not only their relatively small hit point pool, but also their legendary actions. They're all designed to blind, stun, weaken, and evade their enemies. This gives the Mummy Lord the space and the time that it needs to use its minions, its spells, and those lair actions to punish the opposition. Yes, the Mummy Lord does have that nice attack in Rotting Fist, but if you're playing a combat intelligent Mummy Lord, they're not gonna be trading action economy for that strike if they have better options. Now, there are exceptions to this. For instance, if you're against a group of only one or two enemies, or the Lord feels confident in his ability to strike down those mortals with little risk to himself, or when using, as I said earlier, the Rotting Fist as a legendary action followed up by an action that will then place some distance or otherwise hinder oncoming or incoming melee attacks. And remember, as we covered in the stat block, the Mummy Lord can only move 20 feet per round. Lightning quick, they are not, and it's safe to assume that they know this. It is homebrew time. I told you this was going to be a long one. I hope you guys don't mind. Today we're going to provide three out of the ordinary lair examples, three lair actions you might want to use or alter as you see fit in your adventure, and just a hint, a preview, if you will, of Ankahara the Rapacious. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, Ankahara has a much larger role to play in our channel and an upcoming project that I have. Admittedly, I have been cryptic about it, and I apologize for that, but all will be revealed soon. First up, if you're tired of setting your Mummy Lord in the heart of a standard pyramid, as cool as they are, I have two far more uncommon locations where a Mummy Lord might be entombed. But if you like the pyramid idea, but perhaps want to spice it up a bit, 
For our first layer, let me share what I did with a campaign of mine. My pyramid was located in the vast Sunrath Desert. I gave several hints to my party from the very start of the campaign about a miles wide storm that had raged in that desert for centuries and that no one who ventured into the storm was ever seen again. This clearly told my party that something's going on there, something we're gonna to wanna to investigate at some point. But I also made clear through NPC interactions, some stories in books and legends in general that they needed some assistance before going into that area. You see, I had shrouded my pyramid inside this endless sandstorm, of a vast storm that would keep the pyramidic tomb hidden. In my campaign, the party would end up lost if they ventured forth into the miles wide sandstorm without any assistance, taking minor but increasing damage that would eventually lead to them being hopelessly lost or potentially even a dead party. I had created and hinted at an object that my party eventually did find, a scepter that was tied to a much larger plot, a much larger overall campaign plot, and had several growing yet undiscovered powers. One of those was to clear a path towards this now half-buried pyramid where the mummy lord rested atop the pyramid in an ancient observatory. I think there's a lot of cool things you could do placing a mummy lord in an observatory. And if you do that, I'd love to hear about it. Comment down below. Next up, getting away from pyramids altogether, consider placing your tomb in a lost oasis, hidden in the heart of the desert. You could protect this by an ever-shifting mirage, with the mummy lord's lair situated in a lush, overgrown temple right at the center of the oasis. Or if you wanted to be a little more cryptic, perhaps the entrance is located at the bottom of a shallow crystal blue lake inside the oasis. Lots of different ways and mechanics you can homebrew to make that mirage visible and yet hidden at times, but overall a very cool mechanic so that you have some control on how the lair is found. For number three, something very different. How about an ancient shipwreck? A long lost shipwreck has been buried beneath the desert sands for centuries at a time when the desert was part of the nearby sea. Its cargo hold now housing the mummy lord's tomb, guarded by the undead spirits of the very sailors that used to man the ship. If you're looking for a pirate themed mummy lord encounter, this might really fit the bill. Now for some lair actions. I've got three for you. First up, Dread Linen Grasp. As a lair action, the Mummy Lord animates and unwinds strips of the very stained ancient linen from his own mummified corpse. They reach out and attempt to restrain a creature within 60 feet. The target must make a saving throw, strength or dex, dealer's choice here, or become restrained. The target can attempt a new saving throw at the end of each of its turns to break free. I would make this not rely on concentration. Again, this is a lair action, and it's again a way to combat the action economy that might be working against the mummy. Next up, Hieroglyphic Barrier. As a lair action, the Mummy Lord projects a wall of hieroglyphs in a straight line up to 60 feet long and 10 feet high. The wall blocks line of sight and requires an arcana check to decipher and pass through safely. Again, bit of a theme here. We're not being overly offensive because hopefully your mummy lord has minions or guardians. We want to keep distance and play a little more defensive. And last up, Blighted Oasis. As a lair action, the Mummy Lord creates a 20 foot radius pool of cursed water anywhere the Mummy Lord can see within 120 feet. Creatures entering this pool must make a constitution saving throw or take 2d6 necrotic damage and contract a disease or some other detrimental effect that you'd like to add. The theme I envisioned here when I created these homebrew lair actions was far less about making the Mummy Lord super powerful and more along the lines of augmenting and enhancing its existing abilities. The party is in the lair of the Mummy Lord, so I want to extend combat by forcing my party to be more tactically savvy when dealing with this encounter. It's a boss encounter. I'm not looking to TPK the group, but let's be honest, the min-maxers 
the smart players, they're gonna be lighting this Lord up with fireballs and anything else that they can throw at it. And the best way to suppress that without making your Memmi Lord some godly past deadly encounter is to frustrate the party with curses and grapples and blinds, some cover. Any boss encounter that is over too soon from either side is, at least in my eyes, a failure and a balancing issue. This, I think, will help create that good balance. Hopefully these lair actions and strategies work well for you, but maybe you disagree. Let me know in the comments down below. I try to respond to each and every one, and I absolutely read each and every one, and I love to learn just as much as I love to teach. Finally today, as promised, and thank you for sticking around, a preview of and a hint at a project I am incredibly excited to share and I'm feverishly trying to complete in between other episodes. I, I do hate being so cryptic, but I promise it is not without good reason. But let me give you a brief introduction to someone you're gonna be hearing more of very soon. A former ancient king, pharaoh, and now mummy lord. You've heard about him a little bit so far, Ankahara the Rapacious. Long ago, in a bountiful land, the son of a benevolent pharaoh was born under a dark moon. His name was Ankahara III, and he would soon rule his father's kingdom long before his time. Murdered as they slept, both parents to this impatient, treacherous would-be king died never having to witness the villainy their son wrought upon his people. Reigning nothing like his lineage before him, Ankahara's rule was one of blood and shadows, war and suffering, transforming a peaceful, vibrant land into a dark realm dominated by war, conquest, and hatred. Ankahara's insatiable thirst for power was unrivaled and his greed and avarice led to the mass suffering of the very people he was crowned to protect. Hearing stories of fantastic wizards and sorcerers who had achieved immortality, lichdom, Ankahara too sought such divinity at any cost, even at the opposition of his own gods. He drank deeply from the well of dark magic, consorting with abyssal, infernal, and eldritch beings, and making unspeakable pacts in search of such vile knowledge. His twisted desires warped the very fabric of reality, and the shadows that once clung to the corners of his realm now stretched across the realm, choking the light from the skies above. This once bountiful land now turned desolate, barren. Within the seat of his kingdom, he constructed a dark, towering monument to his twisted glory, a pyramid as black as night, built upon the backs of his people and infused with their tears, suffering, and anguish. This unhallowed structure served as both his palace and, eventually, his tomb. He abandoned his gods and they too abandoned him, damning him and his kingdom as the rapacious pharaoh crossed into the forbidden and the unholy. But the passage of time is cruel even to the most powerful and arrogant of tyrants. Ankahara, once a proud and fearsome ruler, grew old and frail, his mortal body withering like a leaf in the desert sun. Realizing his end was near, he summoned his loyal priests and commanded them, using the dark secrets he had gathered over the decades, to perform this dark and terrible ritual to become a powerful lich lord through the path of lichdom. But his knowledge was incomplete. His bargains were but a fraud, and his gods, watching from above, damned his cursed soul to be forever entombed in that black pyramid, even as his kingdom crumbled to dust around him. Centuries have passed, his tomb now mostly buried deep in the sands, shrouded by an endless storm created by the very gods that cursed him, left unseen, forgotten. His eyes once blazing with ambition, now empty sockets that burn with a hate-filled, malignant fire. The once mighty pharaoh had become all he dreaded, lost, unknown, stricken from history books, and long forgotten. Until now, he is awakened, not by intruders, no, a, a, a power sublime yet supreme. 
voices of celestial origin seek my audience. Gods? Yes. I feel their pull. The lure is irresistible. The message is clear. A chance to leave this tomb and rule again. Two words repeat. Mortalis Eternum. Mortalis Eternum. And a prismatic portal to another plane appears. And Kahara grins maliciously, for the world will shudder upon his return. The Mummy Lord, a legendary and iconic monster type that is both a great canvas for a complex homebrew creation or a challenging out-of-the-box encounter by itself. Either way, I hope you were entertained and or learned something new today about the Dungeons & Dragons Mummy Lord. I hope you had as much fun listening as I had sharing. Please consider following on Twitter at Riches and Liches, checking out our Patreon and Discord, and if you feel like I earned it, sub and ring that bell to help me grow this amazing community. Riches and Liches was created to serve you, so comment below and vote in our nearly daily polls to help determine what you'll see us cover next. Thanks for listening, and until next time, remember, the only limitation at your table is your imagination. <laughs>